This is a Volkswagen that was never built or even sold anywhere in Europe. But here in America, we got it as the most entry-level economical car that they could possibly produce. Did that make it a bad car? Well, a bazillion Brazilians can't be wrong. So I present to you my personal 16 valve, shaved, lowered, modified Volkswagen Fox. Today's video is brought to you by our good friends at SolarWork Suspension, as is the rest of this series. If you're in the market for some good high quality suspension in the KW family, so SolarWorks, ST or KW, as long as you don't have a Volkswagen Fox because the fronts have to be custom made, please consider checking out SolarWorks. And if you're going to call them, say hi to Jeremy and Glenn over there from me. This in America was called the Volkswagen Fox, but in Brazil it was called the Voyage. And before the Voyage came the Volkswagen Gaul. The Gaul was the hatchback version, and it actually started with an air-cooled engine from a Beetle mounted up front, driving the front wheels with the axles right behind the engine. Mind-blowing, air-cooled, front-engined, hatchback. <sighs> then it went to water-cooled, 1.6 liter, 1.8 liter, and then they did the 1.8 liter AP, the Alto Performante. This is one of the most beloved engines in all of South America. They're running it on ethanol, they're running turbo, they're running carb turbos. It is unbelievable. And from that spawned a whole generation of tuners and car modifiers in Brazil. Also in South America, this car was called the Gazelle and then the Senda in Argentina. So really, this is a South American car through and through. The American version had great big bumpers, different lights, etc. But these bumpers are from the Voyage. So I flew to Brazil, bought the front and rear bumpers and the side lights and all the other tasty Brazilian tuning goodies and indeed the OEM parts and brought them back to America to have some fun with my American version. In the late 90s, the early 2000s, the Euro look on the Golf Mark 1 and Golf Mark 2 was stretched tires where before stance was ever a thing, shaving roof rails, etc. And one of the cars that set the trend was Danny Allen's Mark 1 Golf. It was also painted in Porsche Continental Orange, which is where I found the inspiration. This is the same exact color as his. And that car set the scene on fire. It was the cover of Performance VW magazine. It was the cover of Max Power magazines. These were the biggest titles in the industry, in the car world perhaps. And that car blew people's minds. So now you know where the Euro look, the stretch tires, the fenders roll to just capture, to just align with the tires came from, from the European side. Again, this car though was never sold in Europe, so building a Euro-style Fox seemed kind of weird, but I think I did okay. So let's go back to the warehouse and take a look at some more of those details that went into the shaving and the creation of the car. So talking about those shaved details, just some of the bigger things that have gone missing. The roof gutters are probably the most subtle, but the most impactful. You would never notice they're not there. And people say, why is the car so smooth? Because those original rain gutter roof channels, whatever you want to call them, completely gone, welded, closed. Other big things, the windshield wipers. The whole mechanism's gone, the arms are gone, the holes for it, completely gone. And then the engine bay, air box, air conditioning, wiring, just as much cleaned up or removed as possible keeping it period correct for the 90s. This is a genuine Volkswagen Accessories rear window louver. You could go to a Volkswagen dealership in 1993 and buy this straight off the shelf, any brand new box. This one I found 15 years later, brand new in the box and finally fitted it for this season. There's also the hood scoop. That is a genuine Volkswagen Accessories. Curiously, never sold in Brazil, where the cars were most popular. Speaking of genuine Volkswagen accessories weirdness, this is actually a factory piece because the passenger mirror on base level North American Foxes were optional. If you wanted a passenger side mirror, you had to pay more. So this little piece here is a genuine blank if you bought that entry level one. Easy 
cheap OEM plus shaving. OEM minus shaving? Is that a thing? Did I just coin OEM minus? Speaking of weird, genuine OEM new old stock, this dashboard sat in a dealership for about 13 or 14 years until I came across it and bought it. It's an original 1987 version, which is a little bit more old school looking. So it had to go into the car. So going from those genuine parts to OEM plus with the engine, because we have to talk about the engine and the noise that it's capable of making. The engine is a double overhead cam 16 valve from a Golf GTI Mark II. It was never fitted in the Fox. In order to make it fit, we had to cut the battery tray out and some other things. But what's more exciting is the modifications done to it. This is the shortest intake to exhaust that I could possibly build. The throttle bodies are from Genvy and they don't use an inlet manifold. They bolt directly to the cylinder head. So when you open the butterflies, you can literally see the valves running. There's no kind of protection. So if a butterfly chooses to fly in through the butterflies or indeed rock, salt, grit, rain, small children, it's just gonna get sucked into the engine. But after 10 years or so of this, it's, it's made it so far. Shout out to Lickle and Molly because this car really does need a good engine flush at this point flowing straight through the valves, it comes out to the Audi V8 exhaust header, which is actually from the same 4.2 liter 32 valve that was fitted to last week's episode with the Audi V8 Quattro 100 S Coupe. This is this exact manifold, just chopped a little bit and welded at the outlet to fit into the engine bay. So there's a fun fact, the V8 is literally two double overhead cam 16 valve heads. The throttle bodies have four injectors on top. They are controlled by Mega Squirt. Little old laptop inside. I tuned it probably 14 years ago and it's still running fine. So don't change it if it works. Speaking of the shortest or cleanest possible paths, the same is true with the cooling system. There's only two hoses in the entire system. It flows out of the front of the engine into a Honda Civic OEM radiator and it flows from the bottom back into the thermostat. That is it. There's no heater. There's no other hoses. An engine will run with only two hoses. The fan is also mounted in front of the radiator to keep it cleaner. So it is pushing air instead of pulling air like conventional setups. And very final details because we can go on about this forever. There's no brake booster that was deleted. Transmission is from a junkyard. It was from a quantum turbo diesel. It is front wheel drive. The axles come out at the front of the transmission just behind the engine. So now you know what makes the noise. Let's go listen to the noise. driving my 16 valve of Volkswagen Fox with a lot of engine noise, a lot of intake noise, a lot of exhaust noise, a lot of wind noise, just a lot of noise. This is a noisy little car. So this car I originally bought back in a auto auction. It was a dark blue, a 1993 Volkswagen Fox Polo Edition. Polo Edition meant it had two mirrors and I don't know, a radio. Um, these were never offered with electric windows, these were never offered with central locking. This was Volkswagen USA's most budget cheap car. As we talked about, a million Brazilians cannot be wrong, and probably they sold a lot more of that between the Gol, Voyage, Karachi, which was the three-door wagon version, and the Severo, the pickup truck. And to this day, they still sell these. They still sell the Gol, the Severo. So this family continues on. Not in the USA, 1987 to 1993 only. Inside, yes, we have the roll bar, we have the bucket seats, the rear seats are shaved. This steering wheel is from my very first project car, my Ford Fiesta, back in England around 1998. And when I moved to America in 2002, I actually brought the steering wheel with me with the snap-off hub. Short shifter from Brazil, Kamai golf ball shift knob. Yes, it's not a Golf, but hey, it fitted and I liked it. Uh, polo gauge cluster from a mid-90s Polo. Like 96, 98, no, it must be later. 98, whatever, later Polo cluster. Um, three gauges here, voltage, engine oil, temperature, engine 
water temperature and then tucked away down there oil pressure as well i added that one before going on a big drive so speaking of big drives this car has driven halfway across america to go to various shows it's also driven to canada we're getting a thumbs up from a mustang owner and i did ship it with the volkswagen group on a boat over to germany so this car has driven on the autobahn it has been on the Nürburgring Nordschleife for multiple laps and we presented it on stage with Volkswagen Germany at the Wörthersee GTI Treffen quite possibly one of the only cars there that was never sold there as weird as that is but there's no Fox badge on the back so you really can't tell what it is and in fact on the front the Volkswagen badge is a OEM black one from a GLI as well so even there kind of a little bit you have to know what it is and when people see the engine going longitudinally, they always think it's rear wheel drive. But as we discussed, it is front wheel drive. Suspension, this is Fox specific as well. It's the same as the Passat B1 and B2, the Dasher or the Quantum here, in terms of its steering and layout. Where the tie rods connect on the suspension is halfway up the suspension arm. So if this is your strut, the steering arm is halfway up where the tie rods connect. This is a terrible example, but hopefully you understand what I mean. But what that does mean is no bump steer. It's very, very evenly spaced. It really is like a go-kart. No power steering was ever offered on these in the USA. So again, a 1993 model with no power steering available ever at all in America. Also, because of that longitudinal layout, the drive shafts are an equal length. So again, no torque steer, as again, we drive past another police officer with no hood. Um, so yeah, I do always have this kind of jokey feeling that although it's the base model, etc., unlike the Golf Jetta where they have unequal axles, this is a kind of a perfect balance. Might be a little bit of a stretch on the sportiness, but it is pretty cool. I do enjoy it that knowledge of the nerdiness inside it is fairly basic we've got the early model dashboard they do have the glue in windshield which all cars in america at that time from volkswagen had for safety reasons the suspension in the front is not available off the shelf or at least not in the usa now there are companies such as castor etc that make it for the brazilian market i think we can finally start to get here but it wasn't available when i built mine so I learned to weld and one of the very first things that I ever welded was the front strut housings to make them shorter and then I put shorter inserts in and coilover springs. Again, SolarWorks does not offer that, but I feel like if we reached out to, to KW now, they would probably be able to make one because it is similar to the Audi 8090 from the mid 80s in Europe and mid 80s to early 90s, I think that lasted. The TD gearbox, the quantum turbo diesel, or indeed normal diesel for the close ratio longer fifth, means first is kind of a joke. First, last, I mean, spins his wheels immediately or chirp them, but first, first is kind of a waste. You can almost start in second gear. But shifter is nice and tight. It's actually gated as well, so it really has a great shift feel. The shift linkage basically goes right into the back of the transmission. And ugh, my roads up here are beat up, so really bouncing around. Say, oh, 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 oh my gosh. The potholes are crazy, not, not good. I think it's time that we come out at night with some paint and make some notes there but yeah all in all i will say the volkswagen fox for being a bargain basement the most base model volkswagen sold since the beetle really it's pretty darn nice you know for being that basic even in the 90s it does everything that a car could do and then i modified the heck out of it and all of that lightweightness and base modelness added up to a fun handling, low, loud car. But as I said, 
a bazillion Brazilians were not wrong. These, these cars are fun. There's a few over in Europe. There's actually a Fox wagon in Europe, the same body style painted the same color as mine. So again, we talk about with Danny Allen, so it wasn't original to me anyway. Um, but yeah, quite rare over there, even in America. I don't know the last time I drove or even saw anybody else driving a stock Fox. It's just rare to see. They just rusted away. People didn't maintain them. They were the base models, so nobody really respected them. There's a, a little bit coming back now, but that didn't mean when I was building this one, I was able to find so many new parts and fun parts, all of the accessories, because nobody really cared. Even then, 2000. Three? This car was only 10 years old. I bought a 10 year old car then. Now, 17 years later, I still own it. And it, it, we've been on a lot of drives together. I, I genuinely enjoy the little Fox. Little 16 valve Fox. Well, that's it for today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed the 16 valve Fox. Of course, a voyage in Brazil. Wash your hands, wash your cars. Take care. There's somebody walking into the shop. That's fine. I messed it up. Cut. <laughs> this is the toughest dude in the office.